Greetings. This is Doc Ock coming to you live today from Black Facts Headquarters Central. Home of Black History Month, the birthplace of Black History Month. Proverb for today. In a court of fowls, the cockroach never wins his case. Just think about that one. Put it in context, if you will. In a court of fowls, the cockroach never, never, the word is never, wins his case. Just in case you were wondering about that. And that's from Rwanda Urundi. Uh, poem. Power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. We used to have all kinds of songs like that back in the day. Don't hear them much anymore, but Stajabu and I, we remember them songs, though. And she wrote a poem, and she calls it Power to the People. Going to use a little word power here, put it to use. Power to the people. They try to run a game on us, we know it ain't right. Always talking about some war they want us to fight. While our air is polluted, the water is bad, and we got more chemicals in our food than we ever had. They talk in new speak for tongue politics to keep us distracted and off balance with their dirty tricks, FCC, DOD, DOE, the big money people taking over control, TV and newspapers selling their soul for money machines and don't forget oil, causing blood to spill on many a, la a nation's soil. Every day you see where someone got caught lying, spying, stealing, cheating. Or someone got bought. They got a scandal over here, a scandal over there. Here a scandal, there a scandal, everywhere a scandal, scandal. Enron here, Dubai there, here a Katrina, there a Laura, there a BP everywhere, a scandal, scandal, Walmart here, Wall Street there, FDA, CIA, NSA, NRA, everywhere, scandal, scandal. Throw your fist up in the air and pump it like you really do care. And if you're tired of corruption and you want to do something, everybody say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you believe in justice and you believe in peace, everybody say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From the mind of Stajabu onto the paper, into the mouth of Doc Ock, who has to let it rock. You know that I do all around the clock, so it shouldn't even shock. Tick tock, tick tock. What do you thought? Yeah. What would you have thought? All right, now, returning to the trial of Dedan Kimati. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so we got a woman, I believe she's out on the street. Yeah, because it said it's proper daylight, walks across stage, youthful, 30 and 40 years of, to 40 years of age, mature, beautiful face. Yeah, she walks... Not exactly stealthily, but with great, great care, as if she treads on treacherous ground. She walks straight into the mouth of a gun. These are all stage directions. Woman. Ooh. Nduri isi niki giki. She moves backwards. The gun follows her. A white man, Johnny style, in green bush battle dress, follows. The Mama Cabina. Good passbook. Atipasi. Ndio passbook. Wapi passbook. Sina. Sam Afande. Defiance in her tone. Afande. Sina Afande. Woman. Sina Afande said with a saucy, sluggish tone, suggesting, I don't have a fine day. Johnny says, Kuja, come here. She does not move. It is he who walks around her. She moves at such an angle 
that the condo is slightly hidden from him. He looks her up and down with the tip of his gun. He attempts to lift her skirt as if to see her legs. She brushes it aside disapprovingly with dignity and moves a step back. He stops moving and nods his head as if she has found favor in his eyes. Now, a lascivious smile spreads over his face. Not bad. Nice legs, eh? Nice, pretty face, eh? He's about to relax and even be at ease with his gun when come a shout from off stage. Laini! A huge whiplash. Laini! He quickly peers over his shoulders and resumes his former seriousness. Why? Kwanini Weiwe Hapana Passbook? Where's your passbook? Woman. Mimi. Women, they don't carry posse. Johnny. Again, appraises her, relaxes, nodding his head lasciviously. Women are their own passbooks, eh? Even to heaven, grinning seductively. Do you live around these parts? Suddenly, before she can answer, he becomes tense, obviously frightened, gun ready. Moves a step or two away from her. What? What's that? What's that bag you are carrying? Hysterically. Toa, Toa, wake a teeny, upesi. Woman, this showing the condo with a casual, rather surprised air of pretended indifference. Johnny, put it on the ground. It's only a condo. A condo. A small basket for women's work. Pull it off, I say. That's good. Put it on the ground. Good. Now, hands on your head. Move a step back. Two steps. That's good. Don't try any tricks now. He is moving towards the condo gingerly, but at the same time, keeping a watchful eye on the woman. She is also tense, but puts on the same air of casual indifference to distract him. Talks rather hurriedly. Are you frightened? A white buana? Frightened by a woman's skirt? A woman's gardening and market basket? Johnny, picking up the basket. You never know what's hidden in these shinzy things. Pours out the contents. The woman is tense but pretends otherwise. Bananas, oranges, sweet potatoes. Parcel wrapped in paper fallout. Meanwhile, the woman is talking cunningly, trying to distract Johnny. Woman, imagine... I would never have believed it. A white man, a soldier, afraid. Johnny, ah, only bananas. Woman, I shall narrate this to the whole neighborhood. Johnny smiles at her, takes a banana and peels it, taking it easy, obviously trying to hide his earlier fears and eating bananas too. What a morning, what a day of wonders, a little mischievously. Can I remove my hands? From my head now, says the woman. Johnny, of course, a white man always gets hungry, especially after a whole night without sleep or food. Ah, mm -hmm. Had to fight out those bloody terrorists until daybreak. This gobbles up another banana. This was only a precaution. Besides, you might have carried a gun. You look like a Mau Mau. Like one of them, Kimati, like one of them Kimathi women. Wanjiru, they called her. She was lean, wiry, and strong. Fought like a tiger in the Battle of the Beehive. No wonder the terrorists made her a colonel. Somewhat forgetting himself. Mmm. Should have seen when we captured her. She swore at us, spat pieces, and kicked like a wild goat as we bound her up. Later at Karu, Karu, Karunaini camp, she would not eat or drink, and she would not tell us where we could find Kimati. And you know, she bit my finger. And why? I wanted to see if she was really a woman. Our Africans got the hungu. Wendanda, and even Wambaradiria, Kimati's brother, were frightened of her. He now takes the parcel and unwraps it. 
The woman is talking fast. Woman, all the same, it's strange. Our men don't fear women. They are not frightened by, by Johnny. Ah, just bread. Ha, ha, ha. One on second thoughts after feeling it. Rather heavy bread, I must say. Bush millet, eh? Could have been a grenade. They are quite cunning, you know. Homemade grenades, homemade machine guns, fanatics. Shall we have a bite? He makes as if to break it into two. The woman dramatically kneels on the ground, almost reaching out for his legs. He is shocked and again frightened by this unexpected move. He moves back a step, puts the bread down and points the gun at her. She talks all the time. Woman, simultaneously with the above action, don't eat it, Buena Master. A fine day, a hundred times, it's all I have to quiet the enemy who is finishing us. Johnny, enemy? Woman, hunger. If you take it, I'll die. I spent so many hours kneading the heavy millet paste. Look, you have almost finished all my bananas. You deserve to die. Have mercy on a poor woman. Johnny, obviously relieved and pleased with her supplication and the feminine submissiveness. He does not realize that she is overreacting. You don't look too poor to me. Stand up. All you need is a brush, water, soap, some high heels, a modern lady. Woman, Bona, I'm only a poor woman. Leave me alone to go my own way. I'm only a poor woman carrying food to save my dying children. Johnny, moving towards her teasingly as if to touch her. It is poor ones like you who carry food to them. Mau Mau in the forest, eh? The woman retreats. Where's your husband? Before the woman can respond, there's a sudden noise of running footsteps without. Johnny starts, panics momentarily, takes his gun and starts to run away. Remembering the woman, he turns back, gives a big knowing wink, and then runs out. She makes some kind of obscene gesture at him. I don't know what it was. Looks all around to detect the source of the noise and seeing no one appear, begins to collect bits of her scattered load. She puts the bread into her condo first, collects the sweet potatoes, and is in the process of collecting the oranges when she hears the voices of two K-A-R, African soldiers who are walking in her direction. That's the uh, King's African, uh, or Kenyan, maybe Kenyan or King's, I'm not sure which, African rifles. So they're working for the government, even though they're black. She grabs the scattered paper wrappings, a few more oranges, and abandons the rest rushing off to hide in the nearby bushes just in time to avoid an encounter with the soldiers. First soldier, anger and cynicism fused. Where are the terrorists who were supposed to be all over Nieti? We've been patrolling all night without as much as catching sight of a single one of them, simply harassing innocent villagers. The way Mzungu makes us thirst to kill one another. That's the first soldier, the one of the K.A.R., the second soldier, irrelevantly, viciously. The bloody fucking mile mile finished without that bugger key mafi. First soldier, what is the idea of arresting a whole village then, huh? Second soldier, irritably, for screening. These natives are very slippery, man. They are the same people as attacked the home guard post last night trying to release key mafi. But they will see. Their bloody key mafi is appearing in court at Nieti. Today, this afternoon, he's going to get a proper court trial. Not like the jungle ones he used to stage in the forest. See how fair Mzungu is? First soldier, ask me tomorrow if there is no attempt to rescue him. Something like what happened last night. Okay, now we're going to have to end it there because our time is pretty much up. But just for the sake of those non-Kiswahili speakers out there, we used to think that the words Mzungu, which is one person, and Wazungu, which means more than one person, plural. We used to think those words meant white person, but they do not mean white person. It turned out what they really meant was crazy person. It's like calling somebody loco, right? Loco, yeah. So that's a, that's how the Africans describe white folks in Kenya, even today. Mzungu, Wazungu, crazy people. Now, I'll leave it to you to figure out why. You can put it all together. And tomorrow, we'll fit. We'll finish this up, the part that we're going to read. We're not reading the whole book, but we'll finish up the part that we're on and see just why was that woman so nervous about her condo? Just why was she so willing to be so um, suppliant 
so um, uh, submissive to this particular soldier when he took her bread and began to break it in two. Why was she so submissive then? Hmm. What do you think? Meanwhile, this is Doc Ock signing out. Doc Ock at noon and nine. Hoping everybody has a real fine day. We'll be black here tonight at 9 p.m. And uh, we'll continue again. See you then.